Before desire becomes visible, before warmth spreads across the skin, before the body signals yes, there is a quiet awakening deep within, not sudden, not explosive, but gradual, layered and profoundly intelligent. Female arousal is not a switch, it is a sequence a rising tide shaped by hormones, nerves, emotions, memory and safety. A cycle as old as humanity, yet still one of the most misunderstood processes in biology. Imagine a symphony beginning in the dark. The first instruments are subtle, a shift in attention, a change in breathing, a flicker of curiosity a sense of openness that wasn't there a moment before. Desire builds long before the body shows its signs. And what makes it extraordinary is this. For many women, arousal begins in the brain, long before the body follows. Thoughts become signals. Signals become hormones. Hormones awaken nerves. Nerves ignite blood flow. Blood flow transforms the entire pelvic landscape. But this journey is not linear. It pauses, it accelerates. It depends on context, safety, trust and emotional resonance. Elements as biological as they are psychological. This is not just anatomy. It is choreography, a deeply coordinated conversation between mind and body. Tonight, we step into that rising tide, from the earliest flicker of desire to the physiological cascade that follows. Let's go inside. To understand the female arousal cycle, we begin not with the pelvis, but with the brain, the true origin of desire. In neuroscience, arousal is described as the activation of specific networks, the mesolimbic dopamine pathway, which drives motivation and anticipation, the hypothalamus, which governs hormonal shifts, and the prefrontal cortex, where thoughts and meanings are assigned. When a stimulus, emotional, sensory or imaginative, captures attention, dopamine rises. This doesn't create physical arousal outright, but it opens the door to possibility. It quiets stress circuits, it invites curiosity. It tells the body something intriguing is happening. At the same time, the parasympathetic nervous system, the branch responsible for calm, rest and sensual awareness, begins to engage. This system slows the heart, deepens breaths and redirects blood toward the pelvic organs. As the brain responds, the body listens. Blood begins pooling in the clitoral tissues, which contain erectile structures similar to the penis, but largely hidden internally. The labia become fuller with increased circulation. The vaginal walls, rich with blood vessels, begin producing natural lubrication through plasma transudation, a process where fluid seeps through engorged tissues. But arousal is not just blood flow, it is sensitivity. Touch, thought, temperature, context, they all interact with sensory nerves concentrated heavily around the clitoris, including branches of the pudendal nerve, which transmits signals directly to the spinal cord and upward to the brain. The environment matters too. Stress hormones like cortisol can slow or mute these signals, while feelings of safety and emotional connection amplify them. The stage is set. The communication has begun. But this is only the beginning. As desire deepens, the body transitions into what is known medically as the arousal or excitement phase a coordinated physiological shift designed to enhance pleasure, comfort and readiness. The clitoris, though externally small, expands significantly. Hidden beneath the surface are the clitoral bulbs and crura, 
structures that fill with blood, becoming firm and more sensitive. These tissues wrap partially around the vaginal canal like a horseshoe, creating a system that responds to pressure, rhythm and movement. At the same time, the vaginal walls undergo remarkable changes. They darken as blood vessels dilate. They lengthen and expand, an effect called tenting, making space and reducing friction. Lubrication increases through both glandular secretions and the movement of plasma through engorged tissues. Inside the pelvis, the Bartholin glands release a small amount of fluid that helps ease initial contact, while the internal vaginal lubrication provides ongoing comfort. Though often confused, these are complementary systems working in parallel. Hormonal shifts also play vital roles. Oxytocin, associated with bonding and emotional attunement, begins to rise. Dopamine continues to reinforce pleasure signals and, most importantly, the parasympathetic nerves maintain dominance, encouraging relaxation and sensitivity. During this stage, the body becomes more receptive to touch and stimulation. The skin flushes, especially the chest, neck and face, due to increased blood flow. Breathing quickens, though not yet at the intensity of climax. Muscles throughout the body, including the pelvic floor, tighten slightly, preparing for deeper waves of sensation. Yet the female arousal cycle is not uniform. It adapts, it changes. It responds moment by moment to mental, emotional and sensory cues. For some, desire intensifies steadily. For others, it builds in waves, rising and falling, becoming stronger each time. And as arousal reaches its peak, the body crosses the threshold into the most dynamic stage of all. At the height of arousal, the body enters the plateau phase, a moment where everything is amplified but not yet released. Blood flow to the clitoris and surrounding tissues reaches its maximum. The clitoral glands may become so sensitive that direct stimulation feels overwhelming, prompting the body to prefer indirect pressure through surrounding structures. Inside, the upper vagina expands further, while the lower third tightens, a unique combination that increases tactile sensitivity. The pelvic floor muscles contract rhythmically, preparing for the possibility of orgasm. Breathing becomes deeper and faster. Heart rate increases. The skin flush intensifies, sometimes spreading across the entire torso in what's known as the sex flush. In the brain, activity between regions responsible for emotion, pleasure and sensory processing peaks. Dopamine floods the system. Oxytocin surges, strengthening feelings of connection. Stress circuits remain quiet, allowing the body to remain fully present. If stimulation continues and the body allows it, this tension culminates in rhythmic contractions originating from the pelvic floor. An orchestrated release involving the uterus, vaginal walls and surrounding muscles. This is the orgasmic phase, though not all arousal ends here and not all pleasure requires it. What makes the climax unique is that it is less about a single moment and more about the body passing through an internal threshold. A sudden coordination of nerve signals and muscle responses that briefly quiets parts of the brain associated with control and self-awareness. For some, this moment is powerful and explosive. For others, it is gentle, warm and deeply internal. No two experiences look the same, but all share the same biological foundation. A peak where physical, emotional and neurological pathways converge. Approximately 300 words. When we talk about female arousal, 
we often reduce it to mechanics, blood flow, hormones, nerve endings, but the truth is far more expansive. Arousal is not only a physical sequence. It is a conversation between mind and body, between safety and curiosity, between emotional connection and sensory awareness. It begins quietly, strengthens through attention and grows when the environment welcomes it. It asks for presence rather than performance and responds not just to touch, but to trust, context, imagination and meaning. What makes the female arousal cycle extraordinary is its complexity. It is not linear. It is deeply adaptive. It can accelerate, pause, shift directions or transform entirely depending on emotion, memory, stress and connection. It is a reminder that desire is not an obligation, it is an unfolding, a slow rising tide shaped as much by the heart as by biology. And perhaps that is the lesson it offers, that human intimacy is not about intensity but attunement, not about performance but presence, not about speed but resonance. Female arousal shows us that the body is not separate from the self. It listens, it remembers, it responds to care, comfort and connection. In every stage, from the first spark of interest to the deep physiological shifts that follow, the arousal cycle invites us to understand desire not as something to chase, but as something to allow. And in that permission, we rediscover the profound intelligence of the human body and the quiet, powerful ways it asks to be seen, felt and understood.